For this tutorial you will need your selected yarn. I'm using Stylecraft Special Chunky in the colour Magenta. You will need a crochet hook which will correspond with your yarn. For this particular yarn I'm using a 6mm. You will also need a pair of scissors and darning needle to sew in your ends. I shall leave a link in the description box below of where you can find all of these things. You want to begin this tutorial by creating your slip knot and you can do this in whichever method you prefer. You want to go ahead and insert your hook and you're going to start off with your foundation chain which is just going to be in multiples of one. So whatever size or width your project wants to be, that's the width that you want to do your chain. So you're going to yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Now I'm just going to do a sample piece so I'm going to go ahead and chain 15. Pause the video, work your foundation chain and I'll meet you back in just a moment. So I've now chained 15 and 15 is the amount of stitches that is going to be in every row. Once you've done your chain make a note of that number and what you're going to do is add another chain. So it's in multiples of one plus an extra one at the end. So now we're ready to do our row one and we're going to be working into the third chain from the hook. We don't count the one on the hook. This is our first chain, second chain and third chain. So we're going to be working into this third chain. And these two stitches that we've just missed here are actually going to count as our stitch. So what we want to do here is yarn over, insert your hook into that third chain, grab the yarn and pull it through. You'll be left with three loops on your hook. Then what we're going to do is take this first loop and pull it through the second loop. You'll then be left with two loops on your hook. You want to grab the yarn and pull through one loop. You'll still have two loops on your hook and then grab the yarn and pull through both loops on your hook. So that is our first proper stitch and then we also have our turning chain. So this would be one, two stitches that we've done so far. Now we're going to move into the next chain and do exactly the same thing. So you want to yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, grab the yarn and pull it through you'll have three loops on the hook. Take this first loop and pull it through the second loop. You'll have two loops on your hook. Grab the yarn, pull through one loop. You'll have two loops on your hook. Grab the yarn, pull through both loops on the hook. So that is our third stitch. I'm going to show that one more time. So yarn over, insert your hook into the next chain. Grab the yarn, pull it through, you'll have three loops on the hook, pull the first loop through the second loop, you'll have two loops on your hook, grab the yarn, pull through one loop, you'll have two loops on your hook, and yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook. You want to pause the video and work your way along the entire chain. So as I say, whatever number of chains you did at the beginning, will be the number of stitches that you have at the end of your row and you are including this chain two or the, your turning chain at the beginning. So pause the video and meet me back in just a moment. So I've just finished my first row and it's already creating this lovely texture. This is why I like to use a chunky yarn or thicker in this kind of stitch because it really really builds a nice texture to the actual pattern itself. So I've done my 15 stitches which is the correct amount for my chain that I started with. At this point what I'm going to do is chain two, one, two and turn the work. Remember this is going to class as a stitch. We aren't going to work into the base of this chain two, we're going to work into the next stitch just here and we're going to do exactly the same as what we've done before. So yarn over, insert into that next stitch, grab in both of the loops on the hook, grab the yarn, pull through, you'll have three loops on the hook, 
take that first loop through the second loop, you'll have two loops on the hook, grab the yarn, pull through one loop and then yarn over, pull through two loops. So you're pretty much going to do the same thing that you've been doing for the first row into the second row. So go ahead and pause the video, work your way to the end and I'll show you where you're going to work your stitches right in the very end of this row. So I'll meet you back in just a moment. So I've just completed my second row. I have done 14 stitches, so my last stitch is ready to go into the end here. So if we look at the end, we have our chain two from the previous row. You can see the um, two chains from the uh, row just here. You're going to yarn over and put your hook underneath those two loops and then do your stitch as normal and that for me will be my 15th stitch. So from here on out it's just exactly the same. You would chain two, one, two, turn your work, you're not working into the base of this chain, you're working into the next stitch and then you would do your herringbone stitch into that space and all the spaces along until you get to the height of work which you desire. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video, work a few more rows so that you can see what it's beginning to look like. So I've just added a few more rows here and you can see that it creates this beautiful pattern and beautiful texture as well, especially with a chunkier yarn. This pattern is perfect for blankets, baby blankets, cushions, cowls, scarves, hats, anything really where you want to have a nice kind of chunky texture. Obviously you can use this with DK but it will take longer to build. It's not too much of a yarn eater either um, in my opinion. So this is the herringbone stitch tutorial. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up, subscribe to keep up to date with all of my latest videos. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you again next time. Bye.